So what do we learn from training camp day two? Not a lot, but let's talk about it anyways. So first off, the preliminaries. The uh, practice was about an hour and 45 minutes. No injuries, which is the most important part. As much as we want our guys to get caught up to speed, you look around what's going on in the NFL, lots and lots of injuries already. So as long as the guys stay healthy, in fact, we're getting guys back. We got Jay Sternberger, we got Trayvon Hester coming back, and we got several others that are coming out of that uh, COVID protocol. They should be back relatively soon. They were in shells today, not pads, but fantastic news tomorrow. The pads go on now that's not great in terms of trying to stay healthy that's when some injuries can happen but um part of the reason we're seeing a lot of news from wide receivers and, and things of that nature is in and, and maybe not quite as much from edge rushers and offensive linemen it's because the pads aren't on yet so guys like um you know rashawn gary guys like zadarius that we've been waiting for updates on they've been waiting for these pads and they're coming on tomorrow so get excited about that the quarterback report is much of the same. Jordan Love looks fine, but he's got some work to do. He's learning footwork and all that kind of stuff, and that's going to be kind of a long time coming. Um, Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. Not a whole lot to report there. He looked good when he looked good, and that's pretty much all the time. Um, the biggest thing, though, is Tim Boyle. Um, Tim Boyle, and there was a press conference after the fact where he kind of talked about the impact it had on him when Jordan Love uh, got drafted. And it's, it's kind of, I don't want to say it's funny because it's not funny, but you don't really expect, from our perspective, from my perspective, I'll leave you out of it. I don't really think of Tim Boyle as being in genuine competition for the role that Aaron Rodgers currently has. You know what I mean? Like, what, what exactly were his expectations? Maybe he did. I don't know. But um, apparently he was uh, pretty distraught by the fact that Jordan Love came in and is going to be uh, filling that role of the heir apparent. And um, clearly he's taken that to heart and he's coming out and he's fighting uh, tooth and nail for that job because um, from all accounts for the first two practices, he's been absolutely phenomenal. None of the quarterbacks have been bad so far, but uh, Tim Boyle has been an absolute bright spot through two training camp so far. As for the running backs, once again, it's all about A.J. Dillon, but this time it's not just about the size of his legs. There was a lot of talk about, similar to yesterday, about him getting worked um, quite a bit, but um, more positive news. First of all, they're, they're utilizing him constantly, both as a runner, but also as a receiver, and all the reports are fantastic. He looks good. He's got great hands, and, and the biggest thing for me personally is the fact that they're really, really pushing him um, and utilizing him a lot, whereas, you know, a lot of other maybe later round draft picks or whatever, they're down the depth chart, or, or even if it's not a later round guy, a lot of the times it's just out of respect, you know, you, you kind of slowly ease guys in, but with this short window, when we don't have much time, they, the, the team doesn't have the luxury of putting out the facade of who's the number one and who's the number two and who's the number three, right? Whereas maybe if this was a normal season, you would see A.J. Dillon down the depth chart and you'd be hearing all these speeches about, well, he needs to work his way up when they know that he's the heir apparent. They know they want to get him up to speed. They don't have that luxury. LaFleur knows he needs A.J. Dillon, or shouldn't say needs, really wants A.J. Dillon to be the workhorse back, and he's intent on getting him up to speed, and they're they're really putting the screws to him, and it sounds like he's really responding quite well. As far as the wide receivers are concerned, it seems like things are starting to normalize a little bit, whereas yesterday you start to hear the sort of grandiose things about the, the Reggie Begleton's and the MVS's and stuff, and you start getting excited. Today was pretty much about Devontae. Devontae's dominant, Devontae's catching everything, Devontae's fantastic. Alan Lazard had a really nice catch. Um, it seems the connection between Aaron Rodgers and Alan Lazard is progressing nicely was the note early on in camp. Um, and the one note that I really saw was that MVS had a couple drops right, over, right out of the gate. So um, there was a Kumaro note, but again, it's sort of normalizing to what you would expect. And that's, that's kind of, you know, training camp is when you hear exciting tales about guys further down the depth chart possibly coming out and becoming superstars and most of the time that doesn't happen so it seems like the wide receiver thing is is kind of what you would expect already we'll see what happens and again without putting pads on without any real contact even wide receivers are getting kind of easy balls and these kinds of things we'll see what happens when the pads go on but um Devontae is clearly the most impressive followed by Lazard followed by I don't know MVS maybe so that's kind of what it was last year. That's kind of what we expected it to be this year. That's kind of what it's already shaping up to be, seemingly. We'll see what happens. Tight end's not a ton going on. Jace got back. Um, 
as I mentioned already, and I heard early on that they were working him in, but I didn't see any notes about him doing much of anything. Um, Deguara is still a ton of work. He's just like A.J. Dillon, where they really want him to be a big part of this offense, and they're pushing him real hard. He's working as a fullback. He's working as a tight end. Kind of the same note as yesterday, but it's carrying on. The only other tight end note that I saw was uh, Matt Schneidman saying, don't sleep on Robert Tanyan as the tight end one. Um, very sorry, Matt. I'm absolutely going to sleep on that. <laughs> I just... I just am. I mean, we'll see what happens, but I don't know. Maybe, but I don't think so. Uh, a couple little tidbits along the offensive line. There's still the shakeup on the right side as far as Rick Wagner, Billy Turner, Lane Taylor. What's going on over there as far as guards and tackles and whatnot? Um, that's still going on. I, I fully anticipated still being Billy Turner and Rick Wagner, but you know, we'll see what's going on. Um, Elton Jenkins did have a, a little bit of a press conference. He was able to answer a few questions. The one thing that stood out, and I know this is just something that players will say, but it's critically important, and I hope he's telling the truth. What he said was um, he expects the offensive line to be much better in the wide zone run game this year. He said a, a year of learning the technique has made all the difference. That's a critical piece for this offense. I, I, I can't understate it. What the 49ers are able to do, what the Eagles are able to do to the Packers, a lot of it really just has to do with this orchestrated, timed out offensive line approach. It's the blocking, it's the angles, it's the timing, it's everything. It's such a, a beautifully orchestrated thing that happens that the Packers need to get going. I mean, right now it's just Aaron Jones, who's just a fantastic running back who runs through holes, but that's not what Matt LaFleur is striving for here. Getting the offensive line to really understand how this works is very, very important. And if they can get that, oh my goodness, it's going to be out of control. The only other thing, um, excuse me, there were two other things. Uh, rookie John Runyon has stayed exclusively at left guard, so he's not involved in the competition over on the right side, but it will be interesting, especially for people working on their 53s. John Runyon seems to be playing probably right now as a backup for the left guard spot behind Elton Jenkins but again we got to see how that all shakes out um, but that's probably the case and then at center there was a note about Jake Hansen it says Lucas Patrick isn't at center with the second team offensive line instead he's at right guard with rookie Jake Hansen at center Hansen started 49 games at center in four years at Oregon so really kind of a weird dynamic and they can shuffle things around a lot especially depending on what happens with Corey Lindsley and and um not just beyond this year, but, you know, who knows what could happen. But remember, Elton Jenkins was a center in college. That's his primary position, as good as he is at guard. He's probably going to be even better at center if the Packers want to do that. So then you got Runyon that could also play guard. You got Lane Taylor that can play guard. You got Billy Turner that can play guard. You got Billy Turner that can play tackle. There's so much carryover of who can do what that there's a lot of different puzzle pieces that can go on here. But that is currently what's going on in training camp. Um, I'm going to lump defensive tackle and edge together because there's not a lot going on. And again, until the pads go on tomorrow, there's probably not going to be a lot of information. But the biggest thing at defensive tackle that I found interesting was that Montrevious Adams was currently right out of the gate. He was getting first team reps over Tyler Lancaster alongside Kenny Clark and Dean Lowry on the defensive line. Um, and then later on, it says Montrevious Adams has consistently rotated in with starting defense and been third defensive line in base alongside Kenny Clark and Dean Lowry. That's not just interesting because of Tyler Lancaster, it's interesting because of Kingsley Kiki. Um, now, it, it could also be that they just want to take a real long look at him because, uh, in my estimation, he's very close to being on the chopping block, and I've heard only good things about um, Kingsley Kiki and Tyler Lancaster has stepped up. It, it doesn't make any sense considering they've put, they could have put Montrevious Adams in, and they didn't. They put Tyler Lancaster in. I think Kingsley Kiki was even being utilized more than Montrevious because Montrevious has just not done very much. So it's entirely possible they just run a really, really good look at Montrevious to see if he's grown, see if he's learned with this additional offseason, see what he's done with his body and all that kind of stuff. Um, and and, and I, in, a, in a way, I kind of hope they're giving him a very serious opportunity to win the job because getting Montrevious to meet that potential level that he has would be massive for the Green Bay Packers rather than just throwing him in the trash bin and wasting a third round pick. He's got all the upside. Um, but to be honest, I don't really expect him to win the job and I don't expect him to be on the team, but I'm absolutely rooting for him because a guy like that on the inside, um, him or Kingsley would be just fantastic. Rashawn Gary, again, slimmed down. The one interesting thing though, he's actually gained weight. 
So the slimming down is a is a combination of losing body fat and gaining muscle. So he looks trim despite the fact that he packed on about five pounds of muscle. Um, he's an absolute workhorse. Rashawn Gary. I mean, if, if it's ever going to happen, you know, it, it's <laughs> he's got every opportunity. It's not going to be for lack of trying because he puts in so much work in the gym. He puts in so much work upstairs. He, he went on to say whether it's true or not. He, he knows the defense. It's just a matter of really perfecting play to play. What do I need to do and, and how do I need to do it and perfecting the technique and all that kind of stuff. So, And I believe him. I believe that he's putting in the uh, the, the study upstairs as well as the, the time in the, in the gym. Um, and I'm, you know, again, obviously I'm hoping everybody steps up, but it, much more than a Montrevious Adams, a guy like Rashawn Gary really meeting his full potential, becoming sort of a Jadavian Clowney, Daniil Hunter type of player, which are some of his comps coming out of college. I mean, it's, it, granted, it's, it's not the most likely thing in the world, but if anyone can be that, it's Rashawn, who's one of the most physically freakish. I mean, he is by far the most physically freakish person on this entire football team, so... Here's to hoping he can meet his full potential. At linebacker, it's really just the Christian Kirksey show, which is probably all that matters. And we'll see what happens again. It's training camp and all that. But he has been dynamite as far as the defense is concerned. We heard yesterday all about him doing a really good job in coverage. And today, right out of the gate, he picks off Aaron Rodgers as he drops into zone. It sounds like it was just a bad read from Rodgers, and he hit him right in the chest. But I'm still going to go on believing that this is a fantastic thing, and I was very wrong about Kirksey coming in and having a really big impact. Um... Again, it's it's the only note we're hearing, and I think it might be the only one that really matters because of the way that the, the defense typically operates. Not that it's a bad thing to have a number two ready, waiting in the wings like Oren Burks or whatever, but generally we're working with one linebacker with maybe Raven Green coming down in the box to help him out. Um, again, it would be nice to get somebody else, Kamal Martin, Oren Burks, whoever wants to step up to step up, but I think it's going to be the Christian Kirksey show, and so far... He's, he's done everything you can ask him to do. It doesn't mean he's going to be fantastic, but if he's going to be fantastic, you kind of expect him to do a really good job in camp, and that's what he's doing. You can only do a good job at this point, so there's no point criticizing the guy over it. And then finally, I want to look at uh, safety as well as special teams. We'll just put them together. Um, Vernon Scott was the highlight of the safety group. Yesterday, the safeties had a fantastic day. Today was the Vernon Scott show. Just a couple notes. Um, number one says, really good read by Vernon Scott. Deflects a pass up, but no one can come down with it. Number two says, Vernon Scott having a big day today at practice. He closes quickly. The third one says, rookie seventh round safety Vernon Scott. The early standout today with a couple forced incompletions on Jordan Love passes. Finally, was a comment from Matt LaFleur. Uh, it says he kind of cautioned him a little bit about where he needs to stand. You know, don't get too shallow as a post defender but he goes on to say but liked how active he was around the ball today in practice quote he definitely has great instincts and we expect him to be a playmaker it's one it's it's actually kind of cool that he's getting critiqued and, and the coach is kind of coming out going yeah he's not he's not actually doing a very good job in terms of the mental side of it because you you think about it without having any idea what's going on he's just making plays right so in other words he doesn't know what he's doing but once the ball snapped he just, he just clicks it on and goes and makes plays. And I, I know PFF had released something based on some of the comments about him having a big day about what a great player he was, especially around the ball. So it's one of those things where you think, what happens when he starts to understand and, and really know what he's supposed to be doing as opposed to just winging it? You know, it's it's maybe unlikely, but it's it, it's kind of exciting, especially when we're so deep at, at safety anyways, to have a guy like Vernon Scott waiting in the wings and to be able to utilize him just when we think he could be beneficial as opposed to needing to force him on there as a starter. Um, and then special teams, the only real note was the return guys, Tyler Irvin, Darius Shepard, and Jair. Don't really expect Jair to win the job just because he's so valuable at corner. They don't want to utilize him in that way, but... I would be willing to bet he might be the best return guy we have, if you remember or if you haven't seen how good he was in college at returning. Um, fantastic return man, but, you know, maybe in a pinch, something like that. But anyways, that's going to do it for today. Uh, if you like the updates and you want to see the one for tomorrow, hopefully there will be one, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell notification. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later.